All right then, so we saw in the last lesson how to create this grid system down here where we can display different items as grid items on a row using Flexbox, but there's two problems with this grid. First of all, we're not given the option to have any kind of grid gap between these different elements in a row. And secondly, when we get to this size screen, a medium size screen, we notice the grid items go to the left, they're aligned to the left, and we have these two columns of width available on the right. Now, I'd like to make some different layout classes to justify the content when we have spare room differently. For example, justify them in the center or on the right, if you prefer. So we're gonna tackle both of those things in this lesson. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come over to our grid file over here, and we're gonna make a map of different grid gaps so let me come under the grid columns and say dollar sign grid hyphen gaps and set that equal to a map and the reason we're doing this as a map is because we're going to cycle through this and generate a class for each grid gap so the first one is going to be zero so the class will be maybe gap hyphen zero and the value of that is going to be zero because that's going to strip away the grid gap if there already was one so the second one is going to be one and the size of this is going to be 10 pixels the third one is going to be two and the size of this is going to be 20 pixels and then the third one is going to be three and the size of this is going to be 30 pixels so we could add other values in here it could go up four five six etc but for us that'll do so we should have four classes by the end of this so now let's try cycling through those down here so beneath the row, I'm going to do a comment to say grid gaps, and then we need to use an each loop. So what I'm going to do is cycle through the grid gaps, right? So I'm going to say for each key val in grid hyphen gaps. So the key is going to be this thing right here, and the val is this thing. So all I want to do is create a class for each one that is going to be gap hyphen, then whatever the key is. So we can place that inside curly braces. So that's going to be grid hyphen zero, grid hyphen one, grid hyphen two, etc. And then all I'm going to do is say, I want to grab the immediate items inside the grid gap. So when we add the grid gap class, it's going to be to a row. Now, I don't want to apply the padding to this thing right here. I want to apply the padding to each item, each flex item inside that row, each direct descendant. So the way we do that is by using this angle bracket and then an asterisk to say whatever element, because it doesn't have to be a div. This could be whatever. It could be a paragraph tag. As long as it has these column classes right here and it's a direct descendant, then it's going to be basically a flex item in this grid. So we've said get all of the flex items and apply padding to that. So the padding in this case is just going to be the val. Okay, so that's going to generate classes for each one. So now if we come over here, I can say gap hyphen two, for example, and I'm going to save that. And then if we preview this in a browser, scroll down here, we can see the gap in each one of these or between each one of these grid items or flex items. Now, the only problem is there's also a gap on the left over here and on the right, and that's because the padding goes all the way around. If I highlight over this div right here, this flex item, we can see the padding on the right. And also over here, if I inspect that, we can see the padding on the left as well. Now, I don't want the padding way over here and way over here because I want it to be flush up to the edges. So how do we combat that? Well, all we need to do is come back to this file and we want to now grab the grid or rather the gap hyphen and then we want hash, curly braces, key, and then style this. So we're styling the row that uses that class here, right? And what we're going to do is basically give this some negative margin to pull it over to the left and to pull it over to the right. So we can say margin left is going to be minus and then whatever the val is, because that's the padding we're using, right? So if we use a gap of 20 pixels, then we're gonna get that 20 pixel uh, padding on the left by default, but then what we're doing is shifting the margin of the left minus back that 20 pixels. So it brings it back across to counter the padding. And we're gonna do the same thing for the right. So we can say 
margin right is also minus and then val. All right then, so if we save this now and take a look, then we can see it's flush up to the left and flush up to the right. And as we get smaller, it's also going to show that gap. Awesome. So that's the gap, and we could have any value from zero to three for that class. So I can make this gap three or gap one, it really doesn't matter. The smaller ones are going to be a smaller gap, the bigger ones, a bigger gap. All right, so that's the gap sorted. Next, I want to show you how we can justify the content or create these classes to allow us to justify the content in different ways. So much like we did for the grid gaps, we need to make a list of values that we can cycle through to generate these classes to justify our content along the row. Now, the way we're going to do this is by using a list in SAS this time, not a map. Now, it's similar to a map, but whereas a map has key value pairs, a list is just a list of values which are comma separated. So let me just paste this in. I've called it layout values, and this is just a list of comma separated values that we use for the justified content property when we're using Flexbox. And that justified content property determines how those elements in a flex row are spread out on the row. So this, for example, this value to justify content would mean align the items at the start of the row on the left. This would mean align them from the right, this in the center, this would put space between them and this space all around them. So they're the different values we're going to cycle through now using the each loop to generate classes for each one of them. So then let's come down here to do that below grid gaps. I'm going to do a comment that is justify content classes. All right. And inside that, I want an each loop and it's going to be for each val in layout values. So much like the each loop we used before, but now we don't have the key. When we cycle through a map, we have a key, but now we just have values. So we don't need the key in this loop. We just have the value. All right then, so for each of those values, we want to create a class and that class is going to be justify and then hyphen whatever the value is. So it could be justify hyphen flex start or justify hyphen flex end or hyphen center, etc. They're the class names. Now the CSS property we want to use for each of these is the justify content property and that's going to be equal to the value. So justify content would be equal to this or this or this, right? And that's all there is to it. And by the way, if this is going over your head a little bit, this whole justified content thing, then definitely check out my Flexbox tutorial series where I talk about this kind of thing in much more detail Then all of this is going to make much more sense. So that's all we really need to do. If I save this now and head to the index.css, we can see all of these different justified classes that we have right here now. And we're going to use these on the row. Now I've already added in, if we go to the grid, down here somewhere, this justify, oops, it shouldn't be end, it should be flex hyphen end. I've added that in now, and that means they should all align on the right. When there's space, when they're taking up the full row, then there's no need to align to the right because they're taking up the full row. But on medium sized screens, when it doesn't take up the full row width, then they should justify to the right. So let's take a look at this in the browser. So let's go to a full screen. If we scroll down, we can see there's no need for them to justify because they're taking up the full width of the row. But when we get to a medium sized screen, now they're being justified on the right. All right. So let's try something else. Let's try justify center, which is what I want. I'm going to save that and preview again. And now we can see on that side screen, they're justified to the center. So there we go, my friends. Now we've kind of finished our grid system. We have all the column classes. We have the justify classes and we have the grid gap as well.